Um, my name is Andreas Buchholz. I'm the Geoinformation Manager at the National Collection of uh, Aerial Photography, NCAP, uh, based in Edinburgh at Arkhams. Uh, NCAP is probably one of the most important and most significant aerial photography <coughs> collections in the world. We have over 15 million uh, aerial photographs from all over the world. We hold uh, all declassified photography <coughs> from the MOD uh, based from 1938 to the 1980s. Uh, there are many other uh, smaller collections as well, um, <coughs> way over 10,000, but as I was told today, it's a lightning talk. I don't want to bore you with too many facts and figures. If you're interested in what kind of collections there are, I'm uh, happy to discuss that later in more detail. What I <coughs> would like to do more is let pictures talk and show you why this collection is so, uh, from my point of view, <coughs> significant and absolutely stunning and unique as well in many purposes. Uh, what you see here is an oblique arrow uh, image of Edinburgh. Most of you probably recognize it straight away. Um, but what's so special about it, special is we have many other sources which link to the photograph and we can add uh, metadata information to it. So we know not even that it's somewhere in Edinburgh, we know exactly it's where it is when and when it's facing north, we know the sortie reference, and we have the metadata saying 12 o'clock, 7th of December 1951. And that is where air photography really comes into its own, when you not only can say the year, you can say actually the day and date. And it says it was taken meantime at 12 o'clock, this information was taken from a plot sortie plot. Uh, if you now look here at the clock, um, you even can see it says 12.35, so the metadata is not lying. Uh, and if you know Edinburgh very well, uh, this uh, clock is just next to Waverley Station. You know this clock goes five minutes fast, so it's actually 12.30. Uh, why am I saying this? That's just a small example how you can use aerial photography and link and have little stories attached to it. But not only little stories as well, big history where you can say this is evidence in camera, camera, you can prove or disprove history. We have photography from uh, the D-Day landings, when you actually see the Allies landing on uh, the Maha Beach. We have uh, imagery of Copenhagen just after the Liber uh, Liberation Day uh, when Montgomery arrived. Uh, so it is really fascinating. So this is one, just one point why this air, why air photography fascinates me so much. But it's not only linking the metadata to a specific photograph. It is as well the resolution and the information you hold on the photographs. This is, again, just one. Another example, oblique photograph, 1947, East Cobb Wright at about 11 o'clock. And all these photographs we hold, we have all different kinds of formats you can ever imagine. You will probably always still remember the 35 millimeter film, but obviously air photography was taken on a much larger uh, with much larger films, so we have 5x5 five five inch, 8x10, 10x20 10, 10 inch even, this size. So that comes with a phenomenal amount of detail. And if you have the right capabilities, which we uh, fortunately have, such as photogrammetric scanners, etc., you can just get every little detail out of an aerial photograph. So if you know, well, this a man might even be still alive, and you can even now see quite clearly that there's a man in the haystacks, and that's, uh, well, we scan these at 1200 dpi, some films are even higher resolution, uh, and you can get all that information out of these. So this is basically Google Earth just 60 years ago. <laughs> um, but so we had the metadata information, we had um, the resolution, but as well time, the resolution of time is uh, really fascinating in this collection because we um, cover the same area, so different periods, especially in Scotland. Uh, so this is, you won't believe me, the same site you just saw there before. And that's where, again, this archive is uh, <coughs> really stunning, where you can say, well, on the left-hand side, uh, it is 1947, on the right-hand side, 1989. It is not only fascinating, it is also for 
uh, the private researchers for the private market, very uh, important to do these uh, analysis to see how the land use changed over years. And you, in this example, it's, I think, quite dramatic. And obviously, we don't have that only for Scotland. We have that for the rest of the world as well. A uh, <coughs> similar example of Cologne, uh, one on the left-hand side, 1945, you can quite clearly see that obviously the bridge is destroyed and people uh, call that as well the miracle of Cologne because where the mouse is here, that's the cathedral, uh, a very stunning building. If you have the chance, go to it. Um, and it wasn't destroyed. All surroundings around were obviously bombed uh, in German destroyed. The cathedral uh, wasn't uh, destroyed. And here that, just as a comparison, unfortunately a cathedral uh, wasn't covered on that image, but you can see quite clearly that the uh, bridge is obviously still intact, where here destroyed. Now, this was the part of the lightning talk where I hoped this was light and uh, quite entertaining. Uh, now, I would like to show you why I'm personally, or not only personally, why I'm here for NCAP. I would like to improve our search facilities, which you can currently access in Edinburgh in the public search room. Uh, I said 50 million photographs earlier, obviously we haven't catalogued them yet, and not all of them. This is one key to, five, to one specific archive, which links to 5.5 million photographs, covering uh, the area highlighted in red. And this should show you now, yes, what we are using here is um, ArcGIS Reader, because it's uh, free and it's just a non-editable map, so uh, people can come to Edinburgh and use this facility. Uh, you have normal um, tools such as searching by coordinate, by place name, or browsing if you know your uh, area of interest. The red squares you can see are 10 by 10 minutes uh, squares, uh, just a grid, and what we did uh, was we digitized over 20,000 maps, which we will see shortly, and they hold all the metadata of the photographs. So all these grids, you can just see what's happening here. Someone zoomed to his area of interest, selected the square, and you get here on the left-hand side a list of 20 so-called plots in this area. So these are all the uh, maps attached to the flight. So you have here the year, uh, month, day, uh, and then these are all hyperlinked to uh, the plots, which will um, <coughs> open now. And this shows you as well the big challenge we have, because obviously one mission, uh, we were just looking for somewhere in Germany, uh, covered Amsterdam, here on the left-hand side, Brunswick in Germany, it covers as well, and that's what we were looking for, Magdeburg. So it is still a very time-consuming uh, research you have to do to actually get to these photographs because after this you can you hope you can actually read these frame numbers and then you can find the microphone etc so still very very time consuming and again what you saw in the background they're just country maps so it is fine you can find your way to the the right uh, grid but it would be nice to have uh, for example all the open uh, layers or something in the background as a nice uh, nice extra Obviously, this is um, not how we catalog individual images. So, we so far on our website we have about sixty thousand images. You can we call it geo browsing for Scotland, all the world. Um, select regions or countries. So let's go to France, uh, and then let's say you're looking for photography in this area, you select it, you then get 1,600 results. You can see that here. And we call that the center point the images. That's obviously much more user-friendly. But to do that for 5.5 million prints, these 60,000 took us three years. Um, so it would be there quite a while. So it was a practical <coughs> approach to catalog something reasonably quickly. And then depending on how much money is it, we, we then you know, go into more detail. And that's a bit more detailed here. It's also color-coded. So on the left-hand side, what these references here are these, what's called sorties and groups. So in this flight, you have actually 
This plane took 704 images um, covering this area. Um, and this is the point of each image. The problem with aerial photography obviously is as well, depending on the scale, the focal length of the camera, it depends how much, how wide the area gets covered. So we captured as well the scale of the photograph, which now allows us to roughly, don't take it for the four corner points are absolute accurate, but it gives you a, a rough indication about what this photograph covers. So you can then just click on it. You can see, okay, that's actually the forest. It is facing roughly direction north. You never, you can't get it right because it wasn't survey photography. So they weren't always flying straight lines. They were obviously sometimes shot at. So. Uh, uh, is never um, survey photography. And then, as you can see, you get all the meta information. If you're a subscriber, you can even zoom in uh, and get further detail. Um, and you see again, that's why I'm here, having here a map interface with a nice map. And just rather than browsing uh, as another window into this material, having a map interface and saying, give me all photography from this area, that would be uh, very nice. So going back to uh, <coughs> that it is a lightning talk in only 10 minutes, just one uh, of our key users uh, or key customers of the archive are actually the German bomb disposal companies. Uh, is most of you probably don't know about it, but it's, for the next hundred years, still a huge problem in Germany. Even in the UK, you still find unexploded bombs from the Second World War, also Italy, France, etc. So you can use this imagery to detect unexploded ordnance. Uh, what they dropped, usually there are rough figures, about 10% of all bombs dropped didn't explode. So it's a huge problem, a lot of people really underestimate. And here the example with the red circles, these three are unexploded bombs and the big craters here um, are obviously exploded ones, but uh, obviously 50 years later, nowadays maybe there's a house on top uh, or a motorway gets rebuilt, uh, they do risk analysis to see, well, is there a chance of an unexploded bomb? And probably every year someone actually dies because of an unexploded bomb. So that's a key use. And at the start of the presentation, I tried to convince you why I'm so passionate about uh, air photography, and the, the reasons why another one, why this collection is so wonderful is they are all, all images were taken with a 60% overlap, which allows you to have stereo pairs. And that's not only a nice gimmick, it helps as well to analyze, for example, for craters, because on a mono image, it is sometimes difficult for the untrained eye to see, is it a hill, is it a ditch? Uh, during uh, World War II, they were obviously as well analyzing, looking for dummies, uh, because uh, Germans obviously built uh, dummy factories which were just painted. So st this <coughs> third dimension is very important, and you can do this with our collection as well. So now is probably the moment. Not <laughs> yet. That's not the 3D yet. <laughs> um, to it might be a bit too light. Let's go back to our website. As a final lightning, so some of them are on the website. We have other examples. Zoom uh, it in. And hopefully, you can see the 3D effect uh, for this example. So, can you see it roughly? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. Everyone has glasses? I have more. You have seen it probably before. <laughs> yeah, and obviously um, there are different, this is now uh, yeah, different technologies, how to use it, but it, it's not only looking nice, but very useful to do analysis. So um, thank you very much for <laughs> your attention. I hope it was light enough.